Anybody have cereal for breakfast? You guys had eggs for breakfast, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, you did have eggs and toast because you have chickens, don't you? And I ate and I ate a little bit of a bacon. You ate a roll in the van? Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about you got a roll with it. No, no. I ate a roll in the van. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
your five up, just one, just one five. There you go, that's five. Here we go, keep your five up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give me a double wave. Good job, good job. Pat yourself on the back. Mm, mm, mm. You're so smart. So listen, this time we're going to do it in Spanish. Does anybody remember what one is in Spanish? Good job. It's uno. That's right. We're going to go from one all the way to ten. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, Siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Good job. Let's do it one more time, okay? Here we go. You ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Good job. Give yourself a double pat. Mm -mm -mm. And a squeeze. Ooh, that was me hugging you. Okay. So today, we're going to read a story about a pie. How many of you like pie? Me. You do? I like pie. What kind of pie do you like? Do you like pumpkin pie? Strawberry. Strawberry. Blueberry. Blueberry. Blackberry pie. What kind of pie do you like? You like pie? I what like. What do you like? Uh, you like apple pie? I like. You? Apple what do you like? Pie. <laughs> we don't make pies anymore. You don't make pies anymore? Do you ever like eat pie, pie when you go out to eat? Well, well I, I don't, but, but strawberry isn't my favorite. Oh, it's not. Strawberry's not your favorite. Oh, well. Do you like pie? You like apple pie? Yummy. Uh, That's yeah, I like sour pie. You like sour pie? Then you yeah. would like a lemon ice box pie. I make a sour lemon ice box pie. It's my <laughs> favorite. What kind of pie do you like? Uh, you like strawberry. strawberry pie? I like strawberry pie. You like strawberry pie? What do you like? Any pie. Any pie. That's the main right there. Any pie. So this book is called Porcupine's Pie. Porcupine's Pie Porcupine prickled with excitement. It was fall feast day. Her mouth watered as she opened her pantry. One stick of butter, two handfuls of sugar, and three scoops of flour. In a pail, she had a pile of rosy red cranberries, just the right ingredients to make her famous cranberry pie. Porcupine read her recipe, step one, wash the cranberries. She stepped into her favorite boots and waddled down the path towards the river. Porcupine stopped to rest at the base of Squirrel's oak tree. Squirrel, Porcupine called, are you making your famous nut bread for fall feast day? Squirrel poked her head out of her nest. No, it's just plain nuts for me this year. Bread needs flour and I have none. Don't look so sad, squirrel. I have flour to spare. Squirrel scampered down the tree trunk. Really? Oh, thank you, porcupine. The flour's in my pantry. Help yourself. Well, that was nice of her to share her flour, wasn't it? Porcupine continued towards the river when she waddled by Bear's Cave. She called, Bear, are you making your famous honey cake for fall feast day? Bear lifted his nose from a book. No, it's just plain honey for me this year. Cakes need butter and I have none. Butter, you say? How much do you need? Only half a stick. I have butter back in my den. Help yourself. Bear dropped his book and nearly gave Porcupine a hug. Thank you, porcupine. Why would you not want to hug a porcupine? Whew, get prickles in your skin. As porcupine neared the river, Doe's thicket came into view. Doe, porcupine called, are you making your famous apple tart for fall feast day? Doe gracefully stepped out into the trail. No, it's just plain apples for me this year. Tarts need sugar and I have none. I'd be happy to lend you some sugar. Help yourself. 
Doe's bright eyes widen. Porcupine, thank you. You have made this a very special fall feast day. Oh, look. Those look like cranberries. At the river, Porcupine looked inside her pail. Oh no, she gasped. Her pail was empty. What happened to all of the cranberries? They fell out. Look, and everybody's looking around and picking them up and saying, oh look, there's cranberries. Hmm. Knock, knock, knock. Porcupine, are you making your famous cranberry pie for fall feast day? No, Porcupine answered. It's just plain pie crust for me this year. I lost my cranberries and now I have none. Guess what? She opened the door. Doe, squirrel, and bear had their famous culinary creations in one hand and an offering in the other. Leftover nuts, said squirrel. A dribble of honey, said bear. A few extra apples, said doe. And a handful of cranberries, said bear. I could just hug you, porcupine beamed. If I can't make my famous cranberry pie, there's nothing better than a festive friendship pie. So she didn't get enough cranberries back to make her cranberry pie, but they gave her other stuff so she could make a pie out of that. And in the back of this book, there's a recipe for something called friendship pie. Porcupine's pie. Oh, they did? Okay, so listen, we, look, I have a porcupine puppet. And if you shake him like that, <laughs> or you can slick him down like that because he's all slicked down because he's nice and calm and then uh <clears throat> okay so listen we're going to take turns and I want you to tell me something that you like okay so here you go you can put your hand in it if you want to can you find it okay all right T tell me something that you like I like this you like that you like it? You want to shake it? Make his quills puff up? <laughs> Good job. Okay. Pass it, to, pass it to her. It's her turn. Okay. You can tell me something that you like. What's that? You like what? You like cranberries? All right. I like cranberries too. Okay. Pass it to your sister. Let her take a turn. Put your hand in there. What do you like? <laughs> Sister, what did she say? She likes what? <laughs> she likes cranberries too. Okay, pass it to him, and sister. Put your hand in there. Put your hand inside. Oh, you don't want to do it? Pass it. Then pass it to her if you don't want to do it. Pass it over. Pass it to her. Just toss it. It's soft. It won't hurt. There you go. Put your hand inside there. Tell me something that you like. What's something that you like? Can you get it? Oh, you gotta hold your sleeve down. Okay. What's something that you like? I have a sweet. What do you like? You like pretzels? You like M&Ms? I have I like chocolate too. Can you do me a favor and walk back there and pass it to the little boy in the blue shirt? I like the chocolate. Give him the porcupine. I like chocolate too. You do too. I do too. I like milk chocolate. Oh, yeah, I don't like chocolate. Okay, put your hand in there. Can you find the hole in the bottom? Okay, can you tell me something that you like? Are you to say cookies? I like cookies too. Yeah, like cookies. Can you pass like it that way? Too. I like the cookies too. Me too. I like I cookies. Do. I love cookies. Me too. I love cookies. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tell us something that you like. What do you like? What do you like? I like the porcupine. You like the porcupine? He's pretty soft, isn't he? That's a trick. Okay, yeah, no, I just want to pop them Okay, pop him up. Pop him up one more time. Woo! Look at him. Watch out. He's pretty spiky. Okay, pass him over. 
No, I want to know. <laughs> Listen, you can play with the porcupine when we get done, okay? When story time's over, I'll let him. I'll leave him sit up here, and you can play with him if you want to. Okay, tell me, tell me something you like. What is this? Blue fruit and nutmeg. No, oh, no, trail. Oh, you like trail mix? No. I like trail mix. Okay, no. pass it to your brother. No, like Cody. Good job. What do you like? I like some um, squirrels. You like squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> okay, pass it to your brother. Let him take a turn. No, pass it to mom. What do you like? Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> I like pizza too. How about you? Bring it up here. And bring it up. I like pizza. I like the cheesy pizza. You like cheesy pizza? Okay, listen, I'm going to come around and I'm going to give you something, okay? I know this looks like lettuce, but today it's cabbage. <laughs> What's yours? Tomato. What, a tomato? What's that? A mushroom. What's yours? What is that? It's a potato. What's yours? Carrots. I thought you meant something dangerous. <laughs> yours is a squash. And yours is a tomato. And yours is a mushroom. Yours is an onion. Oh, what did you get? Rice. Not rice. What is that? It's it's noodles. It's macaroni noodles. Oh, that's nice. Here you want. I like the tomato. I like the juice. Okay, so I'm gonna put my bucket right there. This is literally We're gonna read the story called Stone Soup. Have you ever read that story? No. Stone Soup. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, Sue traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Sue? asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, let's find out. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from so high above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine, floods, and war had made the villagers weary and untrusting of strangers. Famine means that they were very hungry. They didn't have very much food. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a scholar, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others but they had little to do with one another. When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gate to greet them. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on a second door and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing, she asked. We're making a fire, said Hawk. We're gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making stone soup and we need three round, smooth stones, said Sue. The little girl helped the monk look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue. But this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the little girl. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. 
The monks poked the coals. As smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire in the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. Look, everybody's wondering, what's in that pot? One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper, said Hawk. That is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. The last time we had soup, soup stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with an, as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Do you think it would be better with onions, asked Hawk. Oh, yes, maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions, and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads, as the smell was very agreeable. But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips, a few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and cabbages. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager. And bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and mung beans and yams, cried some others. And taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried other villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out. And off they ran, returning with all they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled, how good it would taste. How giving the villagers had become. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steam buns. They brought lichki nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink and they lit the lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for so long as anyone could remember. After the banquet, they told stories sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guest, said the monks. We have been mo you have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making stone soup. Stone soup. Let's sing a song and then we're going to go to the table. So put five fingers up. Five little pumpkins hanging on a vine. Five little pumpkins that are mine. Put your hand on your chest. Pull one off. Give a little sigh. It's almost time for pumpkin pie. Four little pumpkins growing on a vine. Four little pumpkins that are mine. Pull one off, give a little sigh. It's almost time for pumpkin pie. How many pumpkins do we have left? Three. Three. Three little pumpkins hanging on a vine. Three little pumpkins that are mine. Pull one off, give a little sigh. <sighs> Almost time for pumpkin pie. Two little pumpkins hanging on a vine. Two little pumpkins that are mine. 
pull one off, give a little sigh. Almost time for pumpkin pie. How many pumpkins do we have left? One. One little pumpkin hanging on a vine. One little pumpkin that is mine. Pull one off, give a little sigh. Almost time for pumpkin pie. How many pumpkins do we have left? No. No little pumpkins hanging on the vine. No little pumpkins that are mine. None to pull off, give a little sigh. Now it's time for pumpkin pie. Whee! I love pumpkin pie. I eat my pumpkin pie in the cool wet bowl. <laughs> we give thanks. We give thanks for mittens and for coats and boots and hats. We give thanks for yellow dogs and yellow kitty cats. We give thanks for apple trees and bushes filled with roses. We give thanks for nice warm soup and fires to warm our toeses. We give thanks for cousins and for fathers and for mothers. We give thanks for grandpas and for sisters and for brothers. Whew, aunts and uncles, neighbors too, grandmas great and greater. Look at all those rabbits. <laughs> the mailman, the grocer, and the nice Italian waiter. We give thanks for the sun and rain and wind and sleet and snow. We give thanks for bikes and skates and cars that help us go. We give thanks for beetles, bees, and spotted ladybugs. There's a lot of bugs in that picture. We give thanks for kisses and we give thanks for hugs. Oh. Look at that bear's hugging a fish. <laughs> we give thanks for plates and cups and spoons and forks and ladles. Uh-oh, somebody dropped one. We give thanks for kitchens and for food on kitchen tables. It's time to eat. Look at all that yummy food they have. Look, the bear's sneaking the fish a cookie under the table. <laughs> oh, that's a nice book. We give thanks.